Saturday night, and I guess it's all right. Elton John said that, I think. Tonight, we're, what are we doing? This was on sale at Publix. This is a buy one, get one. Chihuahua Cerveza at a Primero. It's a uh, premium Mexican-style lager. It's made in uh, brewed by Chihuahua Brewing Company in Lakeland, Florida. A five percent alcohol by volume. It's a cerveza. Cerveza. It's probably like similar to Corona or. So it's probably one of those similar, probably a light kind of. Easy. It's an easy drink. Yeah, it's, a... it's interesting. I've been interested because I've seen this and I, was, and I told him if it ever goes on buy one get one, I'll uh, we'll buy one get one. Um, but it's got a sexy little chihuahua. So. You can get the app. There's an app for this. We're going to check that out here in a little bit. I'm interested to see what that is. Get the app. But there's no the story. Day. There's no story. It's on the app. Yeah, it's on the app. <laughs> so, talking points are. Um, so, here, here's. Do you think that. I'll just start with this. Okay, so there's this whole beef between The Rock and, um, I can't think of the guy's name. That helps. Uh, from Fast and the Furious. Was oh, Tyrese? Vin Diesel? Or Tyrese? Yeah. I know Vin Diesel, The Rock got into it and they called uh, about Vin Diesel. I didn't know there was one about with Tyrese yeah. as well. So the whole beef with that one is, it's like, uh... Because the Hobbs and Shaw's came out this weekend. And he has a problem with that because he's not in it. But and, it's Hobbs and Shaw. Well... Okay, so that brings there up... There were characters after, like, the first five movies, yeah. right? Because Rock came in at five, I think, Fast Five. And he's been in there ever since. It was yeah. a good... It was a, a cop chasing them. Yeah. And then... The international rice burner, you know... I don't really know. I don't know. <laughs> they keep your interest if you watch them. And yeah. But um, um, they're not going to be award-winning movies. No. But, you know, they keep your interest. But, but the question is, if you are in an established franchise... Okay. And somebody new comes in and they steal, like, the spotlight. Okay, did they steal it or did the producers be like, I want these names? Well, that's the thing. Like, you know, I was like, you know. No offense. I kind of the, saw. The Rock and Jason Statham are bigger names than Tyrese. No and offense to Idris Elba. Idris Elba's yeah. there, too. So. Yeah, and Idris is a. <sighs> yeah. I've heard that motorcycle he has in there is bad. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but uh, my, I, I kind of feel for the guy a little bit because well, yeah. like, he's been in these since the beginning, hasn't he? Can I, I, I'll see two, two, two words. Can I say two words? Yeah. Terrence Howard. Iron Man. <sighs> I love Don Cheadle. Don Cheadle should have been the original. The he, they should have drafted him to begin yeah. with. But you know what I'm saying though? Yeah. Sometimes the ego gets the better of you. You can be the best actor. Great, fantastic actor. But if they're not looking at you to do that... I guess I still feel kind of bad for the guy, because it's like I said, well, yeah. he's been there from the beginning, and it's like, hey, we're doing this whole spin-off, but you ain't in it. It's like... They, I think they, from what I saw, they got Ryan Reynolds. That's what I saw. Like, they are doing pictures. Ryan Reynolds got a little spot in it. Kevin Hart's got a little spot in it. I don't know if that's true. I have not seen it yet. It'll probably be, you know, I'm not a big, I wait till they come out on Netflix or DVD. I don't rush to the theater, even though I know no. Idris will make it a lot better. I, I want to see it, and I, but I want to get my son caught up on it before, you know, yeah. I want him to But then the whole thing is, hasn't Ludacris been in there since the beginning? Yeah. Is he fussing? He's, he's not with me, he's not really an actor. Dude, he's one of the most entertaining parts to me, Ludacris is. I mean, who is Michelle Rodriguez? I dis she died and they brought her back. I and... dislike her with a passion. Why? I just... I don't dislike any actor with a passion. I don't have that much time on my hands. I don't know. I just don't... She To me, she plays the same character in no matter do, what she's in. And it's just like... Just stop. So? Stop. I just... I don't like her. I, I don't know. I don't like her. It's, it's the whole thing, though, is there's a lot of actors you don't see. A lot of people... That's the whole thing is I saw a meme and they're talking about um, how many different characters Johnny Depp plays. And, they're, and, the, and the meme was Gary Oldman. They're like, but have you seen Gary Oldman? <laughs> they show all the, all the characters he's played and it's like, and he never gets the credit. 
And he's fantastic. To me, he's far better than Johnny Depp. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know? And that's the whole thing. Should they have... Hey, it would have been... I'm sure he would have probably been okay with a mention or a five second. Yeah. I mean, he's been in it since two, right? Fast, Two Furious. I think... He was a friend of Brian's in, in part two. Yeah. I mean, remember, Vin Diesel wasn't in part two. They brought him in at the end of part three. Because yeah. he's like, this franchise isn't going anywhere. Then all of a sudden there was a four and then five, six, seven. Yeah. You know? And so, it's it's the whole thing is, it's the producers, it's... Do you feel bad? Yeah. You do, because he seems like a decent guy. You know, but the the producers will go where the money is and the screenwriters will throw it. You, you would think they would be decent and throw a bone and be yeah. like... Yeah. Well, I look at it from the perspective of not just being an actor, but any job. You know, yeah. you put the work in, you're there, you know, you're expecting that promotion to come through, and then all and of a sudden it's like... walk right by you. Yeah, you know, so it's like, you know, they didn't and give not a Not even chance. a thank you or, yeah, or a you reach know? around, you know? Yeah, so... They're like, hey, way to go, yeah. you know? Here's your new boss. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah the, and you, you work in that kind of work line, and, yeah. and, and people work their butt off in, in the office and, and you know who should deserve the raise and somebody else knew or somebody else who you know isn't qualified. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, but it's, I'm not an actor. Am I? And I know some of that probably has to fall on to his, his agent. You maybe, know? or they, maybe it's just the producers being maybe, yeah. D-I-C-K's, you yeah. know? It is, but... I don't know. Sometimes you hope with this, with the whole thing is, because you, you hear about the difference in the male-female pay. Yeah. And you feel good when a male actor speaks up and say, hey, th- those are the feel-good stories when the, when the male actor say, hey, she deserves as much as me. Because it's true. They're actors, actresses, and they deserve as much as each other. And, and I'm going to watch a movie if it's a big actress name or big actor's name, yeah. you know, and, or a director. I mean, the, the women directors are coming out now. And that's the whole thing, is everyone should be paid equal on both oh, yeah. sides of that equation as well. So you would think no matter what, like you're saying, as if somebody's in there from the beginning. Yes. Yeah. There should be something. Yeah. Out of respect. You know. I mean, what was it? Uh, the Fate of the Furious? They at least, you know, you know, um, Paul Walker had passed, passed yeah. away. They at least talked, I think they talked about him in the beginning or something like that, as he got to live his lifestyle and... That was the whole thing of driving Vin Diesel's character into what he had to do is to protect everybody. So it was a little bit respectful. Yeah. So you would think. But. Producers. Yeah. You know. D-I-C-K-S. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know. But uh, we'll be back. And uh, Chihuahua to you. Chihuahua. <laughs> Rupil. Throwing a little curve at Spencer. I'm doing, um, this was months of my, things I collect when it's buy one, go one free at Publix. This is a sparkling wine, so it's a little different for Spencer. It's social. It is a cucumber hibiscus sparkling wine. I know you might think beer. It's alcoholic. So, throw this at Spencer. What is it? It is. <laughs> it's got a percentage. <laughs> Wines, beers, liquor has a percentage. This is a... Four percent, so it's not it's not too strong. It's organic. It smells like a yoga class. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna do goat yoga in a second. If you didn't guess, we're gonna have some goats jumping on us. But uh, you ready? GMO free, sulfite free, no artificial sweetener. It just gets worse. <laughs> <laughs> There's no complaining. But right, here we go. It tastes like cucumber. It does. That was this is to me. This is a really easy to drink. I bought this because my wife is a big cucumber fan, and she didn't like it. And I'm like, <laughs> why did I buy this? There was an, also an elder elderberry or elder apple or something, which will be I'll throw at him at a, 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 another time because there's still some. Left. What do you? <laughs> Your father smells of elderberries. Elderberries. <laughs> I think it's elder apple, but it it definitely tastes like cucumber. At a certain time, though, I mean, like beer, 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 beer. I 
I want somebody to make me a shirt that I survived the skunk beer challenge, okay? Oh, yes, we'll have a something. Um, <sighs> Tina, the Florida crafty label, Florida crafty chick, who sent us the little keychains. Keychains. I asked her if she could make us some koozies. So we actually, she's made us some, and they're on our way right now. She sent them today, so you know. It's supposed to say the brew pill on the front and our names on the back. She actually sent a video of her making it, and I'll I'll put that on at some certain point. I think on the Facebook page or something. I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> you know, she's got this really cool machine that embroiders and everything. I think it's cool that anybody, it's, it's, you got to support your local people. But uh, we pulled up a, another preview here. I think it's, <laughs> he's still mad at me because I pulled a wine on him. I feel douchey drinking this. Dude, you crop dusted me five minutes ago. <sighs> this is what you get. <laughs> this, this is, every time you crop dust me, I'm going to give you this. This is an easy drink, though. You know it is. I fucking going to... But this is called Running with the Devil, which is Nicolas Cage and Lawrence Fishburne, I think yeah. it said. So, push play. It's probably a straight to DVD or Netflix. Quiver. Patriotic Pictures. Always like Lawrence Fishburne. I like Nicholas Cage too. Second load now. That's been light and overcut. I'm aware. It is your territory. It's your responsibility. So fix it. You got anything? It's not good. Double the task force. You gotta get this off the streets. So CIA. There are some administrative issues I have to attend to. Are you happy? It's a start. I'm coming on this next level. I got you into the end. From the fields to the streets, I'm Batman. Everyone is running. I think it's. I can't remember his name. As long as we've been fighting it, nothing has changed. Have you lost a man? You have gambled. You have lost. Running with the social. Well, it, it seems like your average straight to DVD Netflix movie. It felt like Breaking Bad. Uh, God damn it! Watch your language. The the B movie. Mm -hmm. Which is sad because there's so many great Lawrence Fishburne movies that yeah. I love. There are you have you ever seen Event Horizon? Yes. Do you know? It's becoming a series on Amazon. Really? Yes. I think that will be very interesting. There's a lot of things they're, they're throwing out. Amazon's like, with the hit of the boys, has been a big success for them. And they're looking into other things. There's a Simon Pegg, Nick Frost one, a Ghost Hunter series that's going to do, which will be interesting. Sorry, drinking sometimes brings out memory. <laughs> <laughs> But they're like, there's a lot of Amazon, they're like, they'll, I think Amazon's taking it seriously, they want to... They're making a Lord of the Rings series, too. The 26 or 22, ep one of the two. It's over 20, and some people are like, I can't watch for that many. It's like, that's a normal season. Yeah. You're kind of spoiled with the 13 episodes or the yeah. 8 episodes. But the, the 13 episode, 12 episode thing, when they came about with, uh, remember the writer's strike? A couple years ago? Well, it was more than a couple now, but yeah. yeah. That's, that's where it came when, from, and it was like... With, with Heroes, Heroes had the great first season, and the, the writer strike hit in the middle of in the second, and it went from the great, fantastic, to... Uh, yeah. Which which really ruined the whole momentum of Heroes. I think that Heroes created, to me, one of the best superhero powers I've ever seen. Okay, which one? Um, The Girl. The, With the girl. The girl. The young girl. The one that had the ability to watch anybody do something. And she could copy it for a certain amount of time. Okay. Because uh, she was working at like a fast food joint. 
and uh, she figured out that she could copy anybody or whatever. And the the dad of the cheerleader, okay, he showed up and he was like, "Hey, here, these are your abilities." And he was like, "Here's an iPod," and it was like a, a video, or whatever. And he goes, "It's got like I don't know how many thousand videos on." It. And he was like, "Have at it." Okay. And so she's working there one night. They cut I guess from I that. missed that. Or she it cuts from that one, and she's working there one night, and this guy breaks in with a gun, and uh, they're everybody's like, "Oh my god, what do we do?" You know, and so she pulls up the thing. For like kung fu, and she's watching it for a little bit, and she just like that wasn't the, the guy last apart. season, was it? No, because I okay. I quit watching at a certain point, but uh, she watched it for a little bit, and then she put it away, and then she like tears the guy apart, and then you know it just she was gone for you know. But I always I it had so much promise. Heroes did, especially because like they had the in between artwork. You see the comic artwork, and that was done by Tim Sale, and Tim Sale is an incredible artist. You know, just some of my favorite Batman books, Batman the Long Halloween, um, and a lot of it, I, he did a Daredevil series, and that's what I liked, is like, it had so much promise, and the writer strike, I'm sorry, the writer strike did a big damage to yeah. heroes. And, you know, I don't want to blame the writers, no. because, you know, they, they deserve were, money. They were, they were working, they were trying to get paid, you know, actual prizes. It's more of, like, producers, like you were saying before, you know. They're D-I-C-K-S. Yes, they are, you know. It's, it's like DirecTV. Hashtag DirecTV. Who has screwed a lot of consumers out of C all the CBS networks right now. M uh, NBC, CBS, CW. And, and I think that affects, I don't know if it affects even the MTV networks, because that's part of Viacom, I think. And it's just like, really, you can't pay them. You, you're getting this huge contract off of, like, the sports you can work out a deal. Come yeah. on. Because the regular networks can work out deals. So it's to me, it's about greed. It's about people in upper management who look at numbers. And they don't think about the consumers. Yeah. I mean, we were offered... We, this is what we're told is like, we we talk to a director and they're like, well, if you call up, the, they'll send you an antenna. I'm sorry, I'm paying for a DVR. Yeah. An antenna I can't record anything with. Yeah. And this is going way up on way... Left field, sorry. <laughs> Hashtag Simon's angry. Yes, I'm a little angry. I'm about to go... I'm about to go totally streaming. <laughs> I mean, what... Because that's what my wife's you. already there, yeah. so... They're like, go to CBS.com or NBC... No, they don't care. For some reason, they don't carry all the episodes... It's like you're you're yeah. told they do and they don't. Well, with CBS, you have to pay for the all access, <sighs> which we we do. We pay for all access. Well, you're you're a big Star Trek fan. So I no. love Star Trek, so I had to be in there for that. Can't wait for Picard. Picard, man. So, and they had an interview on that, and I gotta watch it because they were talking to um, Patrick Stewart, Sir Patrick Stewart. Um, uh, Much respect. Yes, Jerry Ryan, who yes. plays Seven of Nine. And then um, Brett, Spiner. Brett Spiner, and there was somebody else, and I'm guessing she was. She played a. Are they bringing role. Um, Troy back? Not that I've seen. Okay. Um, but uh, the the big thing I saw was um, Jerry Ryan was actually worried about her character of Seven of Nine in the yeah. in the series because in Voyager she played this very stoic, you know, uh, uh, social. Um. I'm watching him suffer. <laughs> it's one Vulcan-esque character who had no emotion. And in the previews for this one, she seems like she's become human. She's become, you know, who she was supposed to have been before she got assimilated by the board. I always enjoyed watching her because she put Seven of Nine into such a different... Because the enjoyment of the next generation was when the Borg came in. And seeing the assimilation of Patrick Stewart. Yeah. And then the after effects of everything. Yeah. It was just so interesting to see, in my opinion. And that brought a total different um, way to view Star Trek. Yeah. So. See, I viewed it differently than you did because you were older than I was. I'm old. He's old. I was in my teens when Seven of Nine came around, so I was more like... Show me that. <laughs> yeah, you were you were you were you were dealing with puberty. Yeah, I was. So and I was dealing with storyline. <laughs> yes, I'm dealing with storyline now. And she was well, she was worried. She was like, you know, it's a totally different aspect of the character because she's 
she's at, she's on Earth. And yeah. She's being exposed to more people. And in the in the preview, I mean, they show her as she's like, you know, Picard, what the hell are you doing here? Which was not a normal line for her, you know. And so she was like, you know, she she had to read a little bit more, and she was like, okay, they've taken this character and they've evolved it because she's been there for this yeah. amount of time, and she said it, it works out. So I'm I'm curious to see that, but. Venturing out into deep space ourselves as we drink a social cucumber social. hibiscus wine. Dude. Different for the brew pill. <laughs> <laughs>